It kind of feels like playing an orb weaver spider. Like, why does it gotta be like, bleh, bleh? This is my LTD TL6. It is a nylon string guitar. Um, it is chambered out. Doesn't have much resonance. You know, everyone asks, like, how does it sound unplugged? So as a very small comparison, literally, this is a small mini guitar. It doesn't sound absolutely horrible unplugged. It's good enough for practicing, but you really wouldn't want to like mic it up and have that be your main source of audio. You know, like some loud chords. Same chords. I literally just woke up. There's like some goop. I'll play um, a song I recorded with the Onboard Electronics. The sound was not exactly what I expected from it, you know. Um, I wanted to just be able to plug this in directly to my audio interface and have it sound how I want it to sound and then just slightly EQ or tailor the sound, you know, very minimally. But I found that I actually more or less had to mic it up at the same time, you know, at various parts of the body, you know, like trying like different positions of, of the microphone to get what, what I wanted out of it. But then I was able to use the onboard electronics for more bass and mid-range heavy tones, and then use the microphone to get the string attack. And that was what I was trying to avoid. I wanted a guitar that was good in the studio, good at recording songs, and just sounded great with no mic assistance. Very disappointing to me. Uh, I thought this guitar was gonna be the size of a Les Paul. Uh, my allergies are really bad right now, by the way, but this is actually about the same size uh, body shape wise, not like thin wise, but you know, the, the actual outline of the guitar is about the same as a dreadnought. The neck is wider. It gave me the illusion that the body was smaller. Um, I didn't take that into account. And, and of course I could have looked at the dimensions, but I was a fool and I just, I found it for a good deal and I hopped on it, you know? Yeah, so it's a spruce top and a mahogany back, mahogany neck. I believe it's a rosewood fretboard. I like that there are uh, perloid uh, fretboard markers here because I hate when there's no fretboard markers on the actual fretboard. I just started playing nylon strings and stuff like that, so I'm really enjoying it. I find that if you play it in regular sort of electric guitar position, it's better than, you know, sort of like the more classical position, like where you have like, your, your leg elevated because the neck is... is, is so long, it almost feels like playing a, a bass. Like unless you play it like, like super down low, like, like you're playing a cello, you know. You know, unless you play it like down here, your your wrist is not in a good position for the uh, the lower uh, the lower notes here. So you kind of are forced to have to play it like a sort of normal electric guitar, which it kind of makes sense because this is more geared towards stage use and maybe uh, some studio use too, but they're not really concerned with how it how it sits on your, your leg and where the the fretboard lies in your hands when it is sitting on your leg. It feels very awkward. That's one of its my biggest complaints. Actually, that, that is my biggest complaint. I really like the hardware. I have a bunch of designs. You can tell that this one was the one that stood out to them rather than, oh, let's just throw this one on there. Unplugged, it's not impressive at all. Um, you pretty much just get the... The string attack, or you can't rely on that. So when the, when the battery dies in this thing, right? If you have no nine volt, you have no guitar. I really wish there was a, a passive option. You know, it might not sound as good. You might have to boost it up and you might have a, like a high uh, background noise level, like a, but at least it would be audible. The fret work, I, I like the size of the frets. I, I do wish they were, were jumbo frets, but they are, better than those like really thin frets. Uh, they feel really good. Yeah, the width of the fretboard is really nice. I would say, you know, on a scale of one to 10, it's playability in terms of like the neck profile and the string spacing. I think it's like a, 
a solid like eight out of 10. The only reason it makes it hard to play for me is because it's so far away. When I sit with this Les Paul, the fretboard feels, you know, like almost an entire fret closer to my hand. And that's like the furthest away fret. And you know, most of the time like you're, you're in this position, right? Now I, I do wish this came in a non glossy version. I, I know people love shiny stuff. You know, everybody loves shiny things. But on a guitar, a guitar shouldn't be shiny. It just shouldn't. Because when it's shiny like this, you're killing the tone. And on an instrument that is reliant on vibration, you want the wood, or whatever it's made out of, to breathe. You want it to feel alive, right? Like, so when you're, when you're coating it with like polyurethane, a really sort of a dense coating, you know, it looks great. Like it looks reflective. You know, you can see the stage lights. Oh, it's so beautiful. But you're killing the tone. I wish guitar companies would stop doing this. This is a Cordoba miniature flame top um, acoustic. Now this this is a, a polyurethane coating, right? But they, they, it's kind of like a, a really thin coating. So it doesn't really cover up the pores entirely, right? It, it's just kind of like it's dipping in the craters with the pores rather than like glossing over the entire surface. So it, it allows the, the the instrument to actually still, it, it still breathes, it still resonates, you know? If they're gonna finish their guitar, at least do it in this way to where like, you know, you can still see the, the beauty of the wood, you know, I don't need to see my reflection, I don't need to do my hair in the guitar finish, I don't need that, you know? What I need is it to, to sound the best it can possibly sound. So I wish more guitar companies would do this. This is a missed opportunity on LTD and ESP's part to just make this the same size as a Les Paul. There's no reason for it to be this big. There's no acoustic properties that uh, warrant this size of a guitar. It's literally just big for the sake of it. I can only recommend this to someone that is a live performer. You know, unfortunately, I'm already planning on selling this guitar. I just bought it and I'm already planning on selling this guitar. And that's, that's a shame to me because it's beautiful, right? It looks beautiful. It, it does play well, but if I can't use the onboard electronics exclusively, it doesn't mean much to me. I can get the same tone from a solid body, you know, for much cheaper. You know, these go for five to $700 usually, uh, used 500 to $600 and new for like seven or $800, something like that. The fit and finish is is good. You know, it, it does feel good. Although on, on my example here, they forgot to screw in that there's no screws on this side for the uh, the tuners. On this side there is, but on this side there, there's no screws holding the tuners in. So occasionally I have to like push these back in and I don't want to drill it out because I, I don't know, I, I just don't, I don't want to. There's also, Not, not buzzing on the frets, but there's something, there's something internally, you won't be able to hear it, uh, mainly because there's so much yard work going outside, but you won't be able to hear it, but there's like this internal buzzing, and it sounds like it's coming from like around here, but inside the body. I do like the jack location, you know, a lot of times like they'll put the jack here on acoustic electrics, and that makes it to where I can't hold the guitar like I want to, like to, and have it like braced up against my leg. Um, this makes it to where like, the cable hangs down if I, if I want to hold it like in a classical way. But like, just, just looking like this, right? Right? Like, in this position, it's, it's just weird. The, the neck is just feels too long and too far forward. It, it's, it's very upsetting. It almost feels like an SG, like a Gibson SG, how the neck feels like it's further out than it should be. You know, when it's sitting on you, like when you're playing live, it feels like the neck is too far away from you, like the, the furthest fret. You have to buy a special case for it. I've heard that the case is not good quality, 200 bucks. So you you know you can get a dreadnought case and you could pad it in a certain way that that would allow it to sit in there correctly. But still, like it's a pain. You know they should have just made it a standard size, the size of a Les Paul, so it would fit in any Les Paul or any regular guitar case. You know, and then that would have made this guitar infinitely better, and I would still want to keep it. And also, I don't like when they, when when companies put the electronics here. I wish they would put them here, on this side, right here. If they put them right here, it doesn't get in the way of your body, because if I want to lean over on the guitar, my, my chest actually hits this bass button right here, right? 
And I don't know if I'm, I'm adjusting it all with my, with my nipples, but it is touching my body and I feel like I'm putting pressure on the, these very small knobs that could honestly probably break. If, you, if you're on stage, your guitar is aimed kind of up, right? And, you know, because that's just the natural position, it makes more sense to have it here because this would be aimed right at your face and you could see the tuning and you could adjust things because that's where it should be. I don't want to have to like tilt my guitar down, you know, and for those of you arguing like, oh, they, they probably needed more space for the electronics. There's nothing here. <laughs> this is just a battery in this compartment, right? All the electronics are right here, just everything. And then there's wires through it so they could literally fit you know, I mean, there's a pickup underneath the, the, the bridge here, underneath the saddle, but you can fit everything in a much smaller body. You know, it doesn't need to be this big. It's very frustrating. Um, I wanted to love this guitar. Like, I love the cutaway. I, lo I love the sharp features. It looks like an aggressive guitar, even though it's sort of like supposed to be mellow and nylon, but it looks like it has attitude, and I love that. But it's just like, what is this for? What is that? Why is this so big? Why not have it like be cut off right here? Like, why does it gotta be like, bleh, bleh? you know, like why? <laughs> you know, um, and maybe they did it for weight reasons, but still, it's neck heavy. If I have it just on my leg, it's still neck heavy. So it's like, this isn't really helping weight wise, you know, and let's say I like add like a 15 pound weight back here, like it's gonna, it, no matter what, it's gonna be neck heavy. Just so many odd choices. You can tell that I, I, I've been very disappointed by this guitar uh, sonically. I'm, I'm disappointed by it um, size-wise. <sighs> Everything I wanted it for, I wanted it to be a small studio guitar. And it's my fault for not looking at the dimensions, but before you get fooled into thinking the same thing, like because it looks like a Les Paul, it's not the same size as a Les Paul. I hope this video helped you out in your choice making uh, and I'm sorry to disappoint you if, if you were wanting to love this guitar and this might be for you. The action is great. There, there is some There's buzzing when, when you kind of flick it hard, but nylon strings are, are kind of known for that because they, they vibrate more because uh, They're lower tension typically. Another thing is this guitar does not handle palm muting very well. So if I'm like doing this kind of stuff It sounds like nothing it just sounds like uh, sub bass notes. I don't know if that's a piezo or the piezo or whatever it's called pickup, and that's like uh, a typical thing, but I know when I mic an acoustic guitar, I can hear the string noise still. I don't just hear the sub frequencies, the bass frequencies, but, when, but with this pickup and this arrangement, no matter what setting I have it on, it's almost like they're dead notes. It almost sounds like you're not hitting a note like like someone's playing at like a bass with no high frequencies behind you like like it, that's what it sounds like i'll end the the video with a recording that i've done with this guitar recorded direct input a tube preamp and then that tube preamp is going into a compressor and that compressor is going into my audio interface and then i'm also on the side recording with a condenser mic uh the the body of the guitar to get the extra why do i keep on doing that so that's my review. Hopefully it was helpful. Have a good day. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in a future video.